AKS Daily News Analysis of the Hindu Newspaper dated 2nd March 2020 of Hyderabad edition. The first article taken up for discussion is from page number 1. The article here is talking about the second wave of COVID-19 as the outbreak has reached almost around 60 countries and the infections are continuously increasing along with the deaths. right so as of today this corona virus has infected people in and around the 60 countries with the number of deaths crossing around 3000 and china where the epidemic began in december has reported around 200 new corona viruses the lowest increase since jan 21st coming to the south korea it has become world's second highest corona virus cases within around 4212 mostly in and around the southeastern city of daegu here the data is showing with how many countries they are seeing the deaths the deaths is totally different to what they have affected the people in and around the world right now even the new cases have been reported in germany and yesterday we have seen one person has died from the us regarding the corona virus right in this case the who has given few bit of clarification saying that this corona virus is being transmitted by the droplets as well as the formites so earlier we were thinking that it is being uh, uh, it is actually getting transmitted due to airborne kind of things but yet the who has given clarification saying that this corona virus is being transmitted by using the droplets or the form mites especially during a close unprotected contact between the infected as well as the infectee right so the airborne spread has not been reported for this covid-19 and it is not believed to the major driver of transmission the who said that the fecal and oral route also does not appear to be the driver of this transmission so another word that we are continuously coming across the news other than the droplets and the formats which was given by who is the super spreaders right just like the superman the super spreaders are now being related to the covid 19 here super spreader means any individual whose immune system may not be good at suppressing the corona virus or alternatively may be so good that they don't feel symptoms themselves but yet carry on the transmitting to others right so here we have got to see such type of super spreaders in the south korea where a woman who believed to have infected hundreds of people after she visited a church was labeled as super spreader so leaving apart the number of countries infected and the number of people the deaths that we are seeing every day in the news if we see this corona virus has not only has brought about a pandemic in within the people about the health issue but yet we are able to see a empty streets of tourists workers and this corona virus has shaked the economies and it is rewriting the realities of daily life as we have seen even the australia and thailand have reported their first deaths the irony is that italian authorities are announcing that the number of people infected in their country has surged 40% within just 24 hours such type of cases have been also increasing in the us then what about india the only three people who has returned from wuhan uh, first in the first test they have tested positive but all the people who have returned to india have shown the negative impact so as of today we did not even report in a, any one single corona virus case neither the deaths so it kind of shows in the tropical countries maybe this virus is not very mobile or this is just a reason that we may be thinking but as of yet uh, luckily india has not shown any case but in future also if it is showing then india should be well equipped because the spread is becoming very very contagious so once maybe even if we encounter one case we should be well equipped that we should be expecting so many people getting infected with this 
right but the kerala government the way it has tackled it is really commendable as such hopefully this summer will be a bright for many people as most of these regions who are railing under the cold wave are thinking that with the coming of the summer maybe this corona virus will also be subdued hope summer comes this early this year next the article here again is talking about how the corona virus is pushing the world into the recession and it says that although we are luckily really, we have not seen any of the one cases also of corona but yet india can be not cannot be immune of the economic impact that it is going to show right so now it is saying that the global economy will be heading to the recession given the second wave of corona virus which has spread to very numerous and the diverse countries right so it says that if we have to talk about the corona virus impact on the economies here we see it has crippled the global supply chain as well as the it has hit the air travel because we see many of the countries has stopped such type of visa on arrival or the e visas which was more in their uh, domestic policies right in order to improve the tourism but now most of the countries have closed their borders also example pakistan just because the uh, corona virus outbreak is rampant in iran right so that has even taken a toll on the air travel as well as it has even convulsed the markets so the major countries which got affected by the corona virus as type of impact on the economy is again the us right the us which is considered as a global economic engine when this china economy is also already in a deep trouble as we all been knowing most of the wuhan or the hubei province itself is closed and the slowdown and the worst recession in this the major two global economies is not a good news for anybody or even the slowdown or the recession what it is going to bring most of the economies of the world are going to face the brunt as we have seen how the people are reacting to this present corona uh, virus because we have seen they are moving towards the government bonds and they are abandoning the share market that's why we see the prices of the go, uh, government bonds was increasing whereas the yields kept on decreasing and the, if you see the sensex market of the us it was the worst uh, experience since the 2008 global financial crisis right not only that even the gold prices are going down although this may be good for india but yet if you see the demand over the world this is not at all good for the economies but another major trouble that we all have been ignoring just leaving about the economies is the companies which are going to be affected we know that we have been pitching about the globalization where there will be a chain supply to the markets where the markets are different and the production houses are different so most of the companies in the us given their apple or adidas and png are in difficulty because these people these companies are hugely exposed to the supply chain market which is existing in china so once this chain of markets is going to be broken especially because these people are dependent on china it is going to show a huge impact on the uh, economies of the different worlds now we cannot just fly away by saying that economies of uh, just because it is affecting the economies it is leading to something called as financial crisis right so if it if at all it if it was just a financial crisis then the central government or the central banks of particular country can talk about like rate cuts of repo or reverse repo or they will even try to bail out but this virus is very immune to the financial crisis it does not got something to do with the debasement of the any of the financial crisis but it has got to do especially with the supply market chains of the world so now talking about if these two economies are being hardly hit then what impact will it show on india right so india will be most affected if you see now itself just some 2 3 months back that the india's growth is again showing a little bit of hope it was trying to return to the growth but yet such type of global scenario it is going to affect it very badly 
first thing if we see that if at all some sites out of supply chain is going to get affected they can think of airlifting the material from the present countries but yet if you see the problem is just not about the supply chain right so the problem here is beyond the supply chain disruptions which will be very seriously affected industries like pharmaceuticals electronics as well as automobiles not only that it will also show impact on the exports right already our exports aren't doing well in the present economy now with the coming of this virus most of the things are not getting exported so it is more or like becoming stagnant or it may even lead to the negative growth in the exports not only that it will also show effect on our foreign investors most of the fresh investment which needs to come into india may be halted because most of the people we are seeing they are not interested in any kind of share markets now but they are only resorting to the government bonds so not only that our exports will go down but even our foreign investments are going to go down right but yet if you see the impact on india is not very much because we are not the india is not majorly affected because it is not the major participant in this supply chain region right so that's why our economy may not be badly hit uh, and the another positive thing for us is our crude oil prices are we are able to get it in a half rate so that may be good but yet uh, the foreign direct investments and the exports if they are going to hit we cannot expect our economy also to be immune to this corona virus although the uh, people are immune to the corona virus as we have not even reported one case yet so recently we have seen conservation of a migratory species list which was released by the geological survey of india and here in this list it has talked about the list of migratory species to india right this was just before the conference of party 13 which was held in gujarat now the article here is talking about the list how they have improvised it so before the conference of parties they have just given the list of 451 migratory birds sorry migratory animals right but now they have improvised the list to 457 in that we have seen that the majority of the migration happens among the birds which itself take away the 83% of the migratory species to india amounting 380 birds which come to india so the six species have been added that includes the asian elephant great indian bustard bengal forican ocean white tip shark oriel as well as smooth hammered shark so this six have been added together to form 457 species which migrate to india annually and this if you see the importance of india you can know because they have found out just 650 species which migrate globally and among that 457 that is amounting for around 75 to 80% come to india and the majority of them is being dominated by the birds themselves and among the birds if we see the birds which uh, the family to which this birds belong the first one which dominates in this migratory species it is the musica pidae right musica pidae which is as the highest number of migratory species next it is the highest group which follows this migratory birds are called as raptors or the birds of prey example in this includes like eagle owls vultures and kinds which are from the family of acuparidae right so now in they say they have found out three flyways flyways here means just like how we call it as highways so this is the flight uh, paths used by these birds that we can uh, categorize as the first one central asian flyway east asian flyway as well as east asian and australian flyway and another group of birds that migrate in large number are the waders or the shore birds right so here giving the birds uh, i want you people to remember at least the three flyways from where this birds come and the six recently edited uh, species migratory species right coming to the mammals which migrate Uh, are around 46 in number with the bats being the highest followed by dolphins 
as well as the fish which migrate to the shores of India. So before this COP13, the Zoological Survey of India has compiled around 22 species which includes like 12 sharks and 10 ray fish and the oceanic white tip that we are seeing here which was recently added and the smooth hammer shark has been added to the list right so the total number of migratory fish species from india under this conservation of migratory species stands around 24 right so then also seven reptiles which includes five species of turtles and the indian gharial and saltwater crocodile are among the conservation of migratory species but after this COP13, we do not see any addition to this reptile list. Next, the article here is talking about the survey that has appeared in the latest edition of a journal called as Water Policy. So, this survey has said that uh, eight towns in the Himalayan regions, which includes Bangladesh, Pakistan, India, as well as Nepal, it has said that there is around a deficiency of water supply with 20 to 70 percent right this is very very stunning thing for us because himalayan regions we have many glaciers and we always thought that because these countries have himalayan glaciers so the cities which are located in and around this himalayan ranges may never fall short of the water at least in the near future right but yet this report is an eye-opener for us which says that around there is a deficit of 20 to 70 percent in this towns so the researchers here try to survey the 13 towns across the countries in order to understand the challenges that come across because of the urban denizens and it has said the four natural causes not natural sorry uh, the human causes which are responsible for such type of water deficit one it calls because of the unplanned urbanization the second one being the climate change and the third one being the encroachment and the degradation of natural water bodies so we know whenever there comes a lake usually people are starting to encroach upon the lakes and the other water bodies so that is when it is becoming very very vulnerable to the climate change so not only that this survey has said that they were ex these places the himalayan region places are extremely dependent on the springs like almost ranging from 50 to 100 percent for their water and three fourth of these areas are in the urban areas and if the current trend follows the report says that and the demand supply gap may double by the year 2050 and how are these communities trying to cope if they are having so much of water deficit they are saying that these people are resorting to the groundwater extraction which is actually proving to be very unsustainable we know that groundwater extraction they have to either either drill a bore well and because most of these himalayan regions are vulnerable to the earthquake so such type of drilling can actually at least cause few impacts on this already vulnerable regions and if here if they have to talk about the holistic development of these regions then the water management approach can include here the spring shed management as well as there should be a plan adaptation is therefore becomes very very important in order to bring about the holistic water management approach in this himalayan regions so as to all we always we have always been thinking that himalayan regions are abundant with the water if we see only three percent of the total hindu kush himalayan population lives in these larger cities and eight percent of them live in the smaller towns so but yet the projections show that over 50 percent of the population will be living in these cities by 2050 and it is going to place a tremendous water stress on these areas but yet if you see the rural areas have typically garnered much of the attention especially when we have to talk about the development and issues that surround the urban environments so if at all this 
uh, Himalayan regions want to see the urban developments more and more, the uh, first thing that they have to concentrate is about the water stress. These people should stop doing this groundwater extraction because already that region is very vulnerable to the earthquakes. But yet they should start thinking about the spring shed management as well as the plant adaptations. The next article here is talking about the center's plan. In order to review the list of monuments which are protected under Archaeological Survey of India. That means the center wants to increase uh, the number of monuments which are usually taken up solely by the Archaeological Survey of India. And one, not only that, if you see the monuments are basically protected by the Archaeological Survey of India as well as the state governments which come under the Union Ministry of Culture. So as of today, there are around 3,691 monuments nationwide which are protected under the Archaeological Survey of India. And in UP alone, we see the highest number of monuments like 745. And because this list is just has become just like that stagnant, we in this recent past years, we have not seen the monuments which are being added onto the center's list. So now they want to take up the project so that they can add more and mon more and more monuments to their list. So how will they increase the monuments is that few of the monuments at present which are being guarded by the state governments will be added to the central government list of AS ASI. But they are also thinking of adding or removing few of the sites from this Archaeological Survey of India. Uh, if at all they are not very important and give them to the state governments. So this list of procurement of uh, the central government's procurement can actually increase up till 10,000 from the present 3,000 because from the Tamil Nadu alone we are getting around 7,000 temples which may be of which are like 100 years old, right? On the other hand, some of the monuments under ASI will be shifted to the state government so what is the prominence of getting added to the ASI or the central list is that whenever if a certain uh, monument is declared example if you say if the Charminar is declared as a central monument that means that there will be a ban of construction for the 100 meters in and around the Charminar right and the next from 100 to 200 this region will become regulated under the Ancient Monuments and Archaeological Sites and Remains Act of 1958. So this is the act which protects the monuments and sites that are over 100 years old. Next the article here, uh, we do not see the behavioral change is important for our exam and all. But yet there are few facts that are given in this article which can be a questions in the prelims, right? So recently we have seen a very very rare case of cross species adoption in the gir forest we have seen a female lioness was trying to guard the leopard cub so it is like foster care that it was trying to give it to the leopard cub although this bond was very short lived around like only it lasted for 29 to 30 days but yet it is a very rare case of foster care especially between the two competing feline species right so we have been seeing lions and leopards coexist but there is no kind of harmony and here we get to see the lioness trying to rear the leopard cub, a cub as her own is actually stimulating an intriguing behavioral questions that may be because this present lion has recently lost his cub so that has actually blinded it in order to give a motherly care to the leopard cub right so in this context the important things to see here is that such type of foster case is also given uh, by the species like elephant seals as well as the sea lions so this too within the same species if at all a mother loses if at all a child is considered to be orphan these mothers adopt them and try to give them the foster care so only in this two species we get to see but yet they do this foster care only within the species right but cross species adoption also we get to see in the wild uh, here we got to see very two reported cases in that which includes a young marmoset 
uh, was adopted by the family of Cupuchin monkeys in the South America and also once a melon-headed white calf, whale calf was adopted by the bottlenose dolphin, right? So other than such type of cross species adoption, for the first time in India, we have seen this relationship of between the leopard cub and the lioness and they are thinking maybe it is just the maternal and the hormonal instincts of this lion uh, as a lactating mother because it has lost its two cubs so maybe it could have overridden her recognition for this spotted cub but leaving the science alone this is very beautiful it gives lot of lessons for us humans to learn how our mother has was being taken care of this leopard but unfortunately this leopard has died but the report shows that not this lion has never caused any kind of home uh, harm but yet it was leopard leopards itself a normal natural death it has seen so the next article here is it is talking about a big and bad deal we get to see around three to four articles in today's newspaper that we shall discuss in line right so here the article is talking about the big and bad deal it says that the u.s deal with taliban is as not even given any kind of solution to the afghanistan but yet it left the afghanistan people at the mercy of a violent and a tribal islamist what we popularly called as taliban right so now this deal is considered to be the historic deal because of the after 19 to 20 years that they have brought such type of deal right so not only that it this is considered to be the longest war in the history because this war has started after the 9 11 attacks in usa in the year 2001 we are seeing this deal in 2020 right that is why it is correctly called as longest war in the history and if we see the main goal of launching this war by the US was to defeat the terrorists as well as to build and rebuild and strengthen the Central Asian economies right almost it's like 20 years now the US want to exit from the Afghanistan only after it has got assurance from the Taliban that it will not give its soil for the terrorists to operate from its land example like al-qaeda and all yeah right and also this taliban will engage with the present afghanistan government to in order to bring about a lasting solution to the civil war which we are analyzing in the afghanistan right now why us is thinking of coming out of this uh, kind of longest war that it has been raging is it because it has successfully subdued the talibans or the terrorist attack uh, on the us or any other countries the answer is not because it has been successful because it, it did not even subdue this taliban and that's why it is now trying to strike a deal with this taliban people itself now this us although the main aim of it was to not only defeat the terrorism but also to rebuild and strengthen this regions but now it is just hurriedly trying to vacate this country and it is trying to bring more of a intra-Afghanistan war. The reason is why because already economically if we see about US, it has invested around $2 trillion for the past 20 years and it has lost around 3,500 American soldiers in this longest war in history. But did it, it get any result? The answer is again no. Whereas the Taliban now is operating or it is strongly strongly embedded in the country as of present today. So because the war has entered into the stalemate long ago, even Obama has sent so many troops and even the Trump government. But yet this US people did not could not get anything out of it. So now they felt that how they will get it out of it so that they can they not strain so much of their money as well as the people on this land and but the question stands is what do they mean by actually striking a deal only with the taliban because they are not even backing the government the legitimate government which has come into the afghanistan if we see try to analyze it properly it has somehow considered to the taliban right 
because the US has not even talked about the ceasefire of operations with the present government, the legitimacy of the government, and not even it did not even talk about the Afghanistan constitution, neither the civil liberties. Right? It has just given seven day time frame in which it wanted to see the seven day reduction of the violence. And because they have seen this seven day reduction of the violence, they have conceded to the Taliban. Right? But what about this? This, if we talk about the Taliban, if the American is subduing, this Taliban is mostly known for the strict religious laws and they do not even allow the women for the public life. And they do not believe in the schooling, neither the, there will be a systematic dis discrimination on the religious lines. So here it seems like they do not even back the Afghanistan government. All this shows that this US government just wanted to evade or go away from this land, but just striking a deal. So now it has left it to the intra-governmental war that is between the Taliban and the Afghanistan, right? So it is asking for just a ceasefire and slowly the US government is going to remove its military men from this land. So next article here, even this is talking about the uh, a deal that has increased the uncertainty that we have seen between the Afghanistan government and the Taliban. So there is a huge question mark about the intra-Afghanistan fighting so which is the most important issue as of now because the future relationship as we are thinking that the dialogue between this Taliban and Afghanistan is going to be something good between these countries right because we see that it is the main reason why US is going back is to bring back the soldiers it has said that within this 14 months they are going to withdraw all the soldiers from the Afghanistan land and within this 135 days, they are going to take away the 8,600 forces of Af Americas back to their country. So this is this comes very handy to the Trump government because of the elections which are due over there. But if we have to talk about the Taliban and the Afghan government uh, dialogue, which is going to start from this March 10th, this does not seem it. It seems like something between the major ethnic group and the minor ethnic groups dialogue right so this uh pastan the present government which is headed by the gani uh, who be he belongs to the pastun ethnic group of afghanistan whereas the other person who is representing the taliban's middlemen called as abdullah base he is among the fellow tajiks which is the largest second largest group in afghanistan we can call it to be something like intra pastun deal uh, because which are going to reach at expenses of the other uh, ethnic groups especially here we can see tajiks as well as the uzbeks who formed the bulk of the anti-taliban northern alliance from 1996 to 2001 so if there is going to be a lot of ethnic fissures which may descend upon this conflict similarly if we have to talk about the ta taliban it is even Taliban is not having very strong knitted force within this Taliban we get to see many many factions so it is possible that after March 10th although US has made up its mind to leave it seems like this people will still the Taliban people when the talks are going on itself they may try to strike a deal or they may even try to disrupt the government forces so what this US Taliban agreement has brought about in reality is that Although it is saying that it want to help the leaders on both sides so that they stick to the primary objective. That is first thing as I told that they should not allow any terrorist organizations like Al-Qaeda or the Islamic State to operate from the territory of Afghanistan. Right. But yet, although it's saying that this is the first most important thing, but it seems like this is the second important thing for the Donald Trump government as he wants to bring back the soldiers for the due elections so that there will be a chance that he'll get some votes from this people right so the not only that the taliban leadership has also achieved its primary goal that means the my main goal of the taliban was the withdrawal of the foreign forces that is what it is happening and and we get to see that already the taliban actually controls the half of the territory in the afghanistan so now with the withdrawal of this uh, troops also from Afghanistan, 
it seems that it is going to make it more stronger and what it is going to impact we do not know but what is important for us is the impact what it is going to bring on india because already india has invested so much on the resources in order to bring about the stability in the afghanistan this afghanistan is very important for us because it is not only the gateway for central asia but it is also the country through which we wanted to counter the pakistan but it seems like the present pa- taliban is having some kind of concessions towards the pakistan so when us is talking that uh, saying that their land should not be used by the terrorist against us or its allies right so does india include in this allies or not we do not know so we have a constant fear about what taliban is going to collude with pakistan and bring about any kind of disruptions to india so the next article here is again related to the same us taliban agreement so by knowing all these articles we will be clear here afterwards whatever the question comes we are not leaving any stone unturned that you will not understand the basics of this concept right so now uh, the india has signaled that it is happy with the deal what has happened in the taliban because it has also even sent its envoys in order to see what's happening in the doha right as the us as striking a deal after 19 years so this two agreement they have set out the two new agreements as a course for the next 14 months which includes the pulling out of us troops and denial of space to the terrorist organizations and any violence they should not carry out against the us and its allies and the intra afghan dialogue which will be held between the present afghanistan government and the taliban right but yet if we try to glance over this agreement closely it seems like this there are two agreements distributed to the new agencies one is about the agreement for bringing peace to afghanistan between the islamic emirates of afghanistan although it is the name change for the taliban this present thing is not accepted or not recognized by the us like this name called as islamic emirate of afghanistan and it is only known as taliban the next agreement is on the joint declaration between the islamic republic of afghanistan and the united states of america for bringing peace to the afghanistan right so this is the peace deal that we had been talking about it will bring the diplomatic and security experts although such type of reduction in the violence is a much needed for the afghans right but yet all the taliban demands have been front loaded while the actual terms of the peace deal if we see they did not negotiate up between the it depends on the negotiations between the taliban and the present afghanistan right so most critical of the agreements will stand entirely like it seems to be like one sided because taliban cannot deliver on the assurances it's not like just because it is giving a word to usa it is going to stand anything on its words right and now here in this interview if we talk about they are trying to analyze does the us and the allies include india so that becomes a de- important question for us because in the doha agreement uh, all the taliban has said that it will enforce the mechanism so as to prevent the afghanistan soil to be used by any terrorist organization right so as i told that ally will india include in it that there is a big question mark over this because that because taliban is having some kind of pro uh, pakistan alliance so maybe they will use this territory in order to operate against india we do not know right so next comes the question especially on the impact of prisoner release as well as the lifting of sanctions is that that they are going to release the uh, people or the prisoners or war from the jail so that may include by releasing them that means that many people will come into the mainstream the main question here is that already we know about pakistan which is in the gray list of fatf right so bringing down this taliban insurgent from this list may be it will be beneficial for pakistan which is going to face the preliminary actions in this may the next article here uh, it is related to the defense sector of our country the article here is talking about because of the allocations the failing of allocations up to the needs of the navy 
now uh, navy is looking at fleet optimization that means that they want to decrease the manned people on the navy because we have to pay them salaries and the pensions and all right so because of the budgetary constraints it is facing navy is thinking of adopting the unmanned platforms for both aerial as well as underwater operations but yet navy is again fixed in order to bring about the third aircraft carrier as well as the next six advanced submarine aircraft carriers under the project 7751 if we talk about the navy's share in this capital allocations for this year if we see it was around 26688 but yet if we talk about the liabilities of the navy of the last year it was 45000 right but last year it was the allocated Uh, capital was just twenty three thousand one fifty six, whereas the estimated liabilities were around twenty five thousand above. So because of this, they have to rationalize the fleet. So the navy has cut down on the requirement of mine sweepers as well as the patrol aircraft from ten to six. And now uh, navy does not have any dedicated mine sweepers in service, and it is resorting to only makeshift ar- arrangements for this purpose. Right. But yet, if you see the meeting, uh, recently meeting with the CDS, that is General Bipin Rawat, he said that for staggered approach to big procurements, and he was saying that the Navy does not need any kind of third aircraft carrier because it is very expensive. And now either the Navy should choose between the submarines. and the third carrier yet navy has been arguing saying that because of the blue water navy is growing with responsibility now they need to project the power so it is not just one over the other but they need submarines but also they also need the third aircraft craft carrier so that they will have operational carriers on sea bo- boat at any given time